Man, I wish I had some nickel boxes to hunt. Wow, I was wishing for nickel boxes and we've got some nickel boxes. Let's hunt them. Hey everybody, it's Rob with Rob Finds Treasure and it's been harder to get boxes lately, but I do have a couple of nickel boxes here ready for me to hunt. Now, as is custom for me, I did open them at the bank to make sure that they were circulated and we do have some circulated nickel boxes. No fancy schmancy enders on either box, at least on the top side, that I could see. Got kind of corroded one here like it was kept with batteries, but nothing screaming that it's old or awesome. Now, I've only checked the top of the 50 rolls in each box, so we don't know what's on the bottom side and we don't know what's on the inside yet. And it's what's on the inside that counts. That being said, you guys know the drill. I'm gonna be hunting these for any war nickels, buffalo nickels, any older Jeffersons. Of course, I'd love to score a key date or a semi-key date. Any varieties, over mint marks, double dies, you name it. We're gonna be looking for it all. I'm also gonna be looking for any proofs or any other oddities that catches my eye. Now I'll be using my cornrow hunting nickel mat as well as my scope so that I can get up close and personal with any of these coins in case something looks suspicious. That being said, I'm gonna go ahead and get this hunt started. I've got 100 rolls to hunt right now, and we're gonna kick it off with roll number one. We've been on a pretty good streak of finding some silver lately, and of course, this bank is always good at finding me a buffalo or two. Most importantly, on my to-do list is to find another V-nickel. Only three have ever been found by me of all the boxes I've searched. Probably still won't happen. Fingers crossed that we can get lucky, but let's not lollygag any further. I'll bring you in on the first good find. Quick start, roll number one, about a third of the way through. We've got a 1940 minted in, I think San Francisco, but it could be Denver. It is San Francisco, 1940S to kick us off. Roll number four, another 40s. Nickel, and it is a 1940 Philadelphia this time. We're on roll number 10, and I have an edge that is screaming silver. And you can tell by the green edge, it's likely either damage or a silver one. And it's a silver war nickel, 35% silver, minted in Philadelphia, and it's a 44. Pretty toasty, but it's a silver war nickel nonetheless, and that makes me happy. War nickel, 209s, and 240s so far in the first 10 rolls. Roll 13, and it's going to be our third 1940. This one out of Philly, like the last one. Roll 21, and we've got a 1948 nickel facing us, minted in Philly. Roll number 28, and we've done it again. Another buffalo. Slide him down, hunting the roll. Just saw the bottom of it. I don't know if it's gonna have a date. Hey, I think it has a mint mark though. Let's put it under the scope. Oh boy, it's an S. S mint mark. Can we get a date off this without nicodating it? Let me wipe the date area down very carefully and see if I can get a date. If I have to nick a date it, I will, but give me a second. Let's see what we see. Well, I've just taken a lint-free cloth and wiped it down. I can't see a date on there. We know it's a type two because it has the flat mound. So it'd be awesome if it was a 13S or even a 15S, 21S, 24S, 26S, 31S, you name it, any one of those. But unfortunately, we're gonna have to nick a date it to get a date. I've even stuck it under my microscope and you think you can kind of see something here? I don't know. It's tough to tell. No idea. I'm sure it'll pull off a date really easy despite some of the scratching. Let me go ahead and do some nicodating, unfortunately. And then I'll bring you back in and see if we can uh, see what the date is. So I've used the smallest amount of Nicodate and a link to Nicodate is found down below in the video description. That being said, I think you guys can see the date there. 
1919. 1919S is a better date. It is under 8 million minted, but in G4 condition, it's about a $9 nickel. And because we've nicodated it, we're only gonna see about 10 to 20% of that value. So best case scenario, what we have here is a $2 nickel. I'll take it, paid a nickel for it, worth a few bucks, and has an S mint mark. On top of that, we've got two thirds of the trifecta, a war nickel and a buffalo nickel through 28 rolls. Roll 33, we've got our first 1941 nickel minted in Philadelphia of the box. Roll 38, and we have a 1949 minted in Denver. Might as well take a quick peek, see if it has a D over S. And I don't see it. It does have some oddities above here. And the D over S would have something going on here with a hook in here. I probably could clean that up a little bit and see if it shows me anything. Let me take a quick peek, and if it comes out to being something I want to show you guys again, I'll bring it back. Otherwise, we'll get back to the hunt. Roll 41, a 1946 one year off silver from Philly. When we finished box one, the first 50 rolls are now hunted. We did get 10 in the 50s, and the best find of the 50s would be this 1958 Philadelphia. Now it's not a key date or a semi-key date, but there were only just over 17 million minted. So close to a semi-key and it's not in terrible shape. I'll definitely be adding that one to the collection. We also got seven in the 40s, nothing fantastic, but we did get an eighth in the 40s, which was a war nickel, 1944 Philadelphia minted. And we also got a Buffalo nickel, 1919 with an S mint mark, a little bit better date, but we had to nicodate it. We also ran across four more 09s. Unfortunately, all were from Denver, and this one has a little bit of damage. You can barely see the D on it. 23 finds in box one is a good box. I like 20 to 25, so I'm not mad at it. And the fact that we got some silver and a buffalo makes me super happy. Let's get on to rolls 51 through 100 and see if we can add to this board and maybe get 50 total finds for two boxes. Roll 51, or one of this box, and just like the last one, we're gonna start off with a 1940 out of Philly. Roll 57 of the two box hunt, and boom, another buffalo nickel. Ooh, this one looks slick. There appears to be no mint mark. Let's just double check. Little bit of damage down there, but obviously that's not a mint mark, at least not that I can see. Either way, does it have a date? Oh my goodness, it doesn't, and it's been nicodated. It's been nicodated, let's see if we can see that date. There's no reason to nicodate it. It's already been nicodated once, and it was a terrible job. I will point out, not that I'm the best nicodator in the world, but you can see the difference in nicodate treatments. Mine stays within the date area, and that one is just a spill. I'm not gonna nicodate it because it's a Philadelphia for sure, and there really is no key or semi-keys minted in Philadelphia. I suppose I could check it for the overdate, or the 16 over 16, but with me nicodating it once again, we may get a better date off it, but it won't matter. This thing is toast. I'll take it. Second Buffalo nickel of the hunt. We're only 57 rolls in. Can we find more and maybe some more silver? Roll 62 and we've got a 1942 here. Looks non-silver, 42 is a transition year. They made some out of nickel and some out of 35% silver. And because there's no mint mark above the Monticello, it is definitely not silver and there's no Denver mint, so it's minted in Philadelphia. 1942P, first of that on the board. I keep those, I collect those, I'll take it. Very next roll, roll 63, and I've recorded a couple of them, and I've been wrong and I deleted them, but this looks like another war nickel right after that 42. And it is. 
It's a Philadelphia mint mark, and it's not that bad for a war nickel. And it's a 43. So we'll be checking for the 43 over 42. We got it up on the screen. Let me tighten up the clarification here. And I don't see a hook of a two on the three. Does it have the double die? It's got a gouge. No double die. Still, second war nickel of the hunt. We'll take that all day. And now we've got two war nickels, two buffaloes in the boxes. Roll 73, and we've got another 1941 from Denver. Roll 75, and we've got a 1947 Denver. It has that war nickel look to it, but we know it's not a war nickel because it's minted in 1947. Still a cool find. We'll add it to the board and get back to the hunt. Roll 77, and we're going to have a second year Jefferson nickel, a 1939. Will it have a mint mark from Denver or San Francisco and be a key date? It doesn't. Can it be a 39 Philadelphia minted DDO? It is not. 39P in the box. Oldest Jefferson nickel we have found. Same roll, and we've got another 1947 out of Philly. Roll number 90 is going to yield a 1946 Denver minted nickel. Same roll, and we get to add another 1941 Denver as well. Roll 91, 1940 Denver. Roll number 94 is going to end up having a penny. And we lost four cents. Roll 99, and we've got a 1940 minted in Philly. And I'm keeping you here because just notice this one looks old. It's got a Denver mint on the back. 1940 as well. Roll 50 is going to send us away with a parting gift, and it's yet another 1940. And this one might be an S. It is 1940 S. Probably the last find of the 100 roll hunt. Well, there you have it, 100 rolls hunted, and the second box was even better than the first. At the end of the day, not including the top finds, which I will cover last, we got 21 in the 50s and 18 in the 40s for a total of 39 Jefferson finds. Then we also had 809s, so that makes 47. We had a 39P, which makes 48 finds. We had a 1958p almost semi-key date, 49 finds, two buffaloes, and two war nickels, which makes 53 finds. That's better than I usually get, including two being silver, and I pulled out a couple of other side finds, a beautiful 1962 minted in Denver. We'll roll that one back up. I have an oddity here. It's a 1954 D, and even though you want to check for the S over D, there is a D over D, and this is not it, but I thought that was an interesting bit of something going on around that mint mark. Now, the true D over D has a second D to the right of the D, kind of a shadow D. That's not what the D over D is supposed to look like, but certainly odd. We'll keep it as an oddity. Maybe I'll do a little research on it. And then, of course, the other oddity... A tarnished, tarred and feathered, if you will, 2000 and something Denver Minted Shield scent. Crazy. Overall, a great hunt for me. I had a lot of fun. Anytime you can add silver or buffaloes or both to the board, you're going to have a lot of fun. If you enjoyed this two box nickel hunt, I would definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And as a reminder, I don't ask too often, but if you're watching this video and you're not a subscriber, I would really appreciate if you could give me a subscription if you enjoyed it. I have several other videos and playlists that you're welcome to check out, including live streams on Wednesdays and Fridays. Like I said, if you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And as always, everyone, happy hunting. And thanks for watching. few more silvers to add to the 2020 silver jar.